Dear audience, students and scholars, here I am Dr. Amjad Ali. In this video, we will learn about the exchange rate. Dear scholars, so far as we have examined the international flow of capital and of goods and services, uh, we now extend the analysis by considering the prices uh, that apply to these transactions. The exchange rate between two countries is the price at which the resident of those countries trade with each other. In this section, uh, we first examine precisely what exchange rate measures and we then discuss uh, how exchange rate uh, rates are determined. Types of exchange rate. Economists distinguish between two exchange rates. The first one is the nominal exchange rate and the second one is the real exchange rate. While talking about the nominal exchange rate, the nominal exchange rate is the relative price of the currencies of two countries. For example, if the uh, exchange rate between the United States uh, US dollar and the Japanese yen is 120 yen per dollar, then we can exchange one dollar for 120 yen in world markets for the uh, foreign currency. A Japanese uh, who wants to obtain dollar would pay 120 yen for each dollar he bought. Uh, an American who wants to obtain yen uh, would get 120 yen for each dollar he paid. Okay, when people refer to exchange rate between two countries, uh, they usually mean the nominal exchange rate. Okay, while talking about the nominal exchange rate, notice that an exchange rate can be reported in two ways. If one uh, dollar buys 120 yen, then uh, one yen buys uh, 0 0.00833 dollar. We can say that uh, the exchange rate is 120 yen per dollar or we can say the exchange rate is uh, 0 0.00833 dollar per yen because uh, 0 0.00833 equals 1 over 120. He, these two ways of expressing the exchange rate are equivalent. Okay, a rise in the exchange rate say from 120 to 125 uh, yen per dollar is called an appreciation of dollar. A fall in the exchange rate is called the depreciation. Okay, when the domestic currency appreciates its buy more of uh, foreign currency, when it uh, depreciates its buy less. Okay, an appreciation is sometimes uh, called a uh, strengthening of the currency and a depreciation is sometimes uh, called a weakening of the currency. Real exchange rate. While talking about the real exchange rate, the real exchange rate is the relative price of the goods of two countries. That is the real exchange rate. It tells us the rate at which goods of one country traded to another. The real exchange rate is sometimes called the terms of trade to see relationship between real and nominal exchange rate. Consider single good produced in many countries, let's say cars, suppose an American car cost uh, $10,000 and a similar Japanese car cost uh, 2.4 million yen. To compare the prices of the two cars, uh, we must convert them into a common currency if a dollar is worth one. 20 yen then the American car cost 1.2 uh, million yen comparing the prices of the American car 1.2 million uh, and the prices of the Japanese car 2.4 uh, million yen we conclude that the American car cost one half of what the Japanese car in other words at current price we can exchange two American cars for one Japanese car we can uh, summarize the calculation as follows that the real exchange rate uh, is equal to 120 yen over dollar multiplied by ten thousand dollar over uh, American car are uh, over uh, 2.4 million yen uh, uh, divided by Japanese car so the real exchange rate is equal to 0 0.5 Japanese car divided by American car. So at these price and this exchange rate, we obtain one half of Japanese car uh, 
uh, for American car, more uh, generally we can write this calculation as real exchange rate as equal to nominal exchange rate multiplied by prices uh, or price of domestic good divided by price of foreign good. While talking about the real exchange rate, the rate at which uh, exchange foreign currency and uh, domestic uh, goods depends on the prices of goods in the local currencies and on the rate at which the currencies are exchanged okay this calculation of the real exchange rate for a uh, single good suggests how one should uh, define the real exchange rate for a broader uh, basket of goods okay let's uh, we have e be the nominal exchange rate the number of yen per dollar and p be the price level in the united states measured in dollars and p static uh, be the price level in japan uh, measured in yen then the local uh, then the real exchange rate epsilon is uh, epsilon uh, we can call it a real exchange rate is equal to nominal exchange rate multiplied by a, a ratio of price level so epsilon is equal to e cross or multiply a into p over p static okay the real exchange rate between two countries is computed from nominal exchange rate and price levels in two countries if the real exchange rate is high foreign goods are relatively cheap and domestic goods are relatively expensive if the real exchange rate is low foreign goods are relatively expensive and domestic goods are relatively cheap okay while discussing about the real exchange rate and the trade balance we have the main question here uh, what macroeconomic influence does the real exchange rate applies to answer uh, this question remember that real exchange rate is nothing more than a, a relative price just as the relative price of hamburger and a pizza determine uh, what you choose for a lunch and the relative price of domestic and foreign goods affect the demand for these goods suppose first that the real exchange rate is low in this case uh, because domestic goods are relatively cheap uh, domestic resident will want to purchase fewer important uh, goods they will buy uh, american cars rather than japanese car for the same reason foreigner will want to buy a, a many of the uh, u.s uh, cars as a result of both of these actions the quantity of the american net export demanded uh, will be high the opposite occur if the real exchange rate is high because domestic goods are expensive relative to foreign goods domestic resident will want to buy many imported uh, goods and the foreigner will want to buy a few of the United States goods. Therefore, the quantity of the United States uh, net export demanded will be low. So, uh, we can write this relationship between the real exchange rate and net exports as uh, net export is a function of uh, real exchange rate. This equation stands then net exports as a function of real exchange rate. So, for the better understanding of uh, the real exchange rate and the trade balance, uh, we can uh, see it uh, in the graphical presentation. So, here net export and the real exchange rate we have net export and on uh, our x-axis and we have real in, uh, real exchange rate epsilon on our uh, y-axis so here we have uh, 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 net ex uh, real exchange rate uh, curve so uh, this figure shows that the relationship between the uh, real exchange rate and the net export the lower the real exchange rate the less expensive are the domestic goods relative to foreign goods and thus the greater uh, the uh, US net exports note that a portion of the horizontal axis measures negative value of net export because imports can exceed exports net exports uh, can be less than one so this figure illustrates the negative relationship between the uh, between the trade balance and the real exchange rate okay here uh, we have uh, the determinants of uh, real exchange rate 
Okay, we now have all the pieces needed uh, to construct a model that explain uh, what factor determine the real uh, exchange rate. In particular, we combine the relationship between net exports and the real ex exchange rate we just discussed with the model of the trade balance we developed uh, uh, in, uh, in our previous videos. We can summarize our analysis as follows that uh, real exchange rate is related to net export. When the real exchange rate is low, domestic goods are less expensive uh, relative to foreign goods and the net export are greater. And uh, uh, the trade balance must equal the net capital outflow, which in turn equal uh, saving minus investment. Saving is fixed by uh, the consumption function and fiscal policy. Investment is fixed by investment function and the world interest rate. So for the better understanding of uh, uh, the determinant of the real exchange rate, let's see a graphical presentation that uh, how the uh, real exchange rate is uh, determined. So we have the net export uh, on our x-axis and we have the real exchange rate on our, our uh, y-axis. Here we have the diff, uh, saving and investment uh, difference. Uh, we have uh, the real exchange rate function and here we have the equilibrium level so the real exchange rate is determined by the intersection of the vertical line uh, uh, representing the saving minus investment uh, and the downward sloping net exports uh, uh, at this interaction the quantity of dollar supplied for the inflow of capital abroad equal the quantity of dollar demanded for the net exports of goods and services. So these uh, uh, conditions reveal that uh, the, uh, we have uh, the relationship between net exports and the real uh, exchange rate uh, uh, slope downward because a low real exchange rate make domestic goods relatively inexpensive. The line representing the excess of saving over investment we have uh, here uh, s minus i as a vertical line because neither saving nor investment depends on the real exchange rate so that's why in a small open economy we have the fixed so the crossing of these two uh, lines determine the equilibrium level of real exchange rate okay uh, if you see uh, this graph that it look like uh, the ordinary a supply and demand diagram. In fact, you can think of this diagram as representing the supply and demand for the foreign currency exchange. The vertical line here represents the net outflow. Uh, net outflow and thus uh, uh, we can say the uh, supply of dollar to be exchanged uh, into foreign currency and, and converted abroad. The downward sloping line here we have uh, real exchange rate uh, and X uh, represent the net demand for dollar coming from uh, for foreigners who want uh, dollars to buy the American goods. Okay, we have the equilibrium real exchange rate. Okay, at the equilibrium real exchange rate, uh, the supply of dollar available uh, from, uh, from the net capital outflow uh, balances the demand for the dollars by foreigners buying the US uh, net exports. Okay, the determinants of nominal exchange rate, uh, having seen that what determine the real exchange rate, we now turn our attention towards the nominal exchange rate, the rate at which the currencies uh, of the two countries trade. Okay, we can uh, recall the relationship between the real and nominal exchange rate. We have a uh, real exchange rate is equal to nominal exchange rate multiplied by ratio of price level. So epsilon is equal to E, E multiplied by P over P static. So uh, write the nominal exchange rate as we have E is equal to epsilon multiplied by P static over P. 
So this equation shows that nominal exchange rate depends on real exchange rate and the price level in the uh, in two countries. So given the value of the real uh, exchange rate, if the domestic price P rises, then the nominal exchange rate E will fall because a dollar. Uh, keep it in mind that here uh, a dollar is uh, worthless. A dollar will buy fewer yen. Uh, however, if the Japanese price uh, peak uh, static uh, rises, uh, then the nominal exchange rate will increase because the yen is worthless, a dollar will buy more yen. Okay, while talking about the determinant of nominal exchange rate, uh, it is useful to consider uh, changes in exchange rate over time. Uh, the exchange rate equation can be written as the percentage change in uh, E or uh, nominal exchange rate is equal to percentage change in epsilon or real exchange rate uh, plus percentage change in price P static minus uh, percentage change in price of uh, USA. This is P static, uh, P static for the prices of prices in Japan. So the percentage change in epsilon is the uh, the change uh, in the real exchange rate the percentage change in price uh, P is the domestic inflation rate pi and the percentage change in uh, P static is uh, foreign currencies inflation rate of pi static uh, thus the percentage change in the nominal exchange rate can be written as percentage change in uh, nominal exchange rate uh, is equal to percentage change in real exchange rate plus uh, we have the uh, uh, foreign inflation rate minus uh, US inflation rate. So percentage change in nominal uh, exchange rate is equal to percentage change in real exchange rate plus the difference in inflation rate. So. Uh, this equation states that the percentage change in the equation uh, in the nominal exchange rate between the currencies of the two countries equal the percentage change in the uh, real exchange rate plus the difference in their inflation rate. So if a country has a high rate of inflation relative to United States, a dollar will buy an increasing amount of the foreign currencies over time. If a country has a low rate of inflation relative to United States, a dollar will buy a decreasing amount of foreign currency over time. This analysis shows how monetary policy affect the nominal exchange rate, uh, which we have discussed in our pre previous video that high growth in money supply leads to a uh, high inflation. Here we have just seen that uh, one uh, consequence of uh, high inflation is a depreciation uh, currency. Uh, high uh, pi implies falling or uh, nominal exchange rate, uh, we can call it a high uh, uh, real exchange rate implies a falling nominal exchange rate. In other words, just as growth in amount of money it raises the price of goods measured in term of money, it also tends to raise the price of foreign currency uh, measured in uh, terms of domestic currencies. So this is all about exchange rates the determinants of real exchange rates and the determinants of nominal exchange rates. So see you with another video. Ciao.